Hey there, and welcome to base coating the bike for the Kuroshi Rider. Um, and uh, I'm just going to keep this pretty simple actually. So first up, I'm just going to block everything in in grey, and then it will get black and quash. So I'm going to do that. I'll, I'll block it in grey, dry brush it white, give it a black and quash, and I'll be back with you in a moment once all that done and dried. Just before I put the black ink wash down and you can see I've put up the heavy charcoal grey, I've dry brushed it, or yeah it was heavy charcoal grey, I've dry brushed it with a light grey and then I've finished off just with a dry brush of white. And as it gives you this kind of chalky uh, colour range and I'm going to just bash in a probably two parts black ink, one part water wash over the top of this just to blend, set everything together and start that toning. Back in a moment when that is. Yeah, but then all linked up, ready for the next stage. Yeah. Run it up to some pretty white highlights, you can see it comes out, you know how it goes. Gives you this kind of highlight. Uh, there will be another tier of highlight, and I'll probably try and give it some clear sort of diagonals running through staff. Uh, just to give like some of the metal areas a more metal look. Metal! But, um,. Next up, I'm just going to block in all the areas that I want to be turning red. So I'll get back to you in a second once I've just blocked that in and um, given it a highlight before redding it up so I've got my red ready to go. Then we have the base warm grey pink uh, along with um, the white highlight. And you can see with the white highlight I've started to pick out um, all of the kind of key highlights and following the lines, following the contours, dropping in some of these kind of diagonals in various places where we have flatter planes or larger areas and I think this is all good, it doesn't really matter. The pink's painted quite carefully, specifically leaving black lines in between. You can use the black lines, this is a, if you use black undercoats at all and you want to speed paint, well, I say speed paint, paint quickly but have a tonal effect or shaded effect and good definition, really clean without much work. If you paint like this, in some respects it's a slower process but you can do like a one layer of paint and then blap a highlight on it and you get this kind of an effect. And actually you know what, it's fine, it's tabletop worthy I think. But uh, next up I'm just going to block this in red and then I'll drop in the final lights and that will be my base coating done. So we'll be back in a moment when that's all ready. We have it then, this is just the red laid up and then all the final bits of beginnings for lights. As you can see, I think it turns out pretty well. Uh, the red's a little bit pink in places. Um, also, there's quite a lot of reflection on it. It's mostly dry. Uh, I did use it slightly watered down, and this is because I want to be able to see the, sort of the highlights that I put on underneath. And I would recommend that if you are wanting to use this kind of technique where you use like the warm grey with the white highlights, Maybe use something a bit darker than the warm grey, um, maybe mix in a bit of, maybe even just a bit of red with it, or um, a bit of brown even, or use a heavy orange if you want a warmer finish so that it comes out with a sort of slightly yellower, orangier red. But I'm going to be working a whole load more highlights and stuff over the top, so I wanted it dense enough to be a sort of ready colour but so that I could still see some of that highlighting coming through. And so, call me or not, you decide as ever. Um, I hope this has been some use and interest to you and that all your stuff's coming out just how you want it. Thank you for watching, have a good one, take care. Bye-bye.